Greetings. This little slideshow will explain very generally how the Modern Language Association works cited or bibliography format for books is set up. It's standard for any written or published work in which people use sources outside of their own observation to include information about the sources they used. This is known as the bibliography or works cited page. Obviously, if your text quotes or refers to any work of writing or art, then it's necessary to include that work in the work cited. And this is not limited to writings, but includes speeches, films, television, interviews, works of the visual arts, works of music, and so on. This is based on the eighth edition of the MLA handbook, which should be able to answer any question not included in this presentation. For 2018 and on forward, there have been some significant changes to MLA format. Most of you will find it a bit easier, but remember, the main idea is to make it easy for your reader. In case you were wondering, MLA stands for the Modern Language Association, the professional organization of college English teachers. Basic format is very simple. The author's name, period. The title of the book in italics, followed by a period. The publisher of the book, followed by a comma, and the date of publication and the entry ends with a period. So here's a simple example. Agatha Christie, the author of Witness for the Prosecution, the publisher is Samuel French, and the most recent date of publication is 1982. Now, you may have noticed for most Western authors, the family name is followed by a comma and then the author's first name. We always start with the family name. So in the case of Agatha Christie, would be Christie, comma, Agatha. Now for names of authors, such as many Oriental authors whose family name comes first, no comma is needed. So Nito Shen, Ni is the family name, so there's no comma. For two or more authors, only the first author listed has the names reversed. So for two authors, for example, this is Charles Nordhoff, James Norman Hall, author of the Mutiny and the Bounty books. Only Nordhoff, comma, Charles uh, is formatted that way. And the second name following his name formally written. Now, if a work has three or more authors, then you'll just use the name of the first author listed, followed by the abbreviation FL. By the way, uh, in any type where you have multiple by hand or using a typewriter, underlining is equivalent to italics. But nowadays with computers, italics has become kind of standard and a lot of times underlining means something else. Now, subtitles are separated by the uh, from the title by a colon and they are also italicized. So here's just a simple author and title, Charles Dickens, Great Expectations. Again, Dickens, comma, Charles, period, Great Expectations. And for bibliographical purposes, is treated as part of the title.
replace the author's name with complete dashes. So, for example, let's say your uh, book or your paper uh, quoted from both Great Expectations and A Tale of Two Cities. The first entry would have the complete bibliographical entry, as always. But the second entry, you wouldn't repeat the author's name. You would just have the three dots. So, expectations alphabetically comes before a tale of two cities, because when we alphabetize, we do not consider the articles a, an, or the. Now, followed, following the title is the publisher, and for uh, basic book entry, a period follows the title or subtitle. And it, uh, it's not necessary anymore, it's something new, to include the city of publication. Thanks to the computer, the internet, various online booksellers and databases, MLA no longer deemed it necessary to include the city of publication. Uh, they do have make some exceptions for some works published before the 20th century. And if you're concerned about that, you can take a look in the MLA handbook. I'm not going into that here. Notice that, uh, as always, if the entry goes into the second line, each line after the first line is indented. It's the, precisely the opposite of paragraphing. Paragraphing, you indent the first line, and the subsequent lines go to the margin. In a bibliography entry, works cited page, it's the opposite. The first line goes to the margin, and any subsequent lines are indented. Most word processors call this hanging indentation. If you go to the paragraph format, you'll usually see hanging indentation. And uh, the standard is either half an inch or an inch to indent. Whichever way you choose, be consistent. Now, for basic book entry, uh, as I said, the period follows the title or subtitle. Uh, for the publisher, you don't have to include the corporate titles or abbreviations such as publisher, company, Inc., corp., etc. Now, for college publishers, you use U for university and P for press, and UP for university press. These are all capital letters. So, in simple examples, Paradigm Publishing becomes just simply Paradigm. Harper Brothers and Company becomes simply Harper. Uh, university of Pennsylvania Press becomes U of Pennsylvania P. Yale University Press becomes Yale UP. Now, occasionally, uh, you'll see um, that a publisher will be listed as a division of another publisher. In that case, you may use the name of the division. So this book, Every Man's Battle, uh, says on the title page, published by Waterbrook Press, a division of Random House. Okay, so uh, we would write Waterbrook rather than Random House. Occasionally, there are two separate publishers. This is unusual, but does happen with special editions. Sometimes happens with uh, religious works, that kind of thing. So uh, this happens with, for example, this new international version of the Bible. Uh, so uh, in that case, you name both publishers, and you separate them with the virgule what is sometimes called the slant bar or the forward slash. But, uh, <coughs> the virgule is the term grammarians use. Following the publisher is a comma and then the date of publication. And use the most recent date of publication or copyright you can find in the work. And the date ends the basic entry. Sometimes other things may be added, but it's pretty rare. Always use Arabic numerals, everyday numbers. Hollywood especially likes to use Roman numerals, but translate them into Arabic numerals first. Again, you make it easy for the reader. Okay, so, okay, you have an, uh, a film, and let's say the copyright on the film is, you know, MMXI. Well, okay. Translate that into 2011 
for the reader. Okay. So you have no Roman numerals in the bibliography unless it's part of the title. For example, the uh, Agatha Christie play mentioned earlier lists three copyright dates, 1933, 1948, and 1982. There are no other dates listed, even though we just performed this play a few years ago, uh, and I'm sure that the uh, particular copy was printed long after 1982, but 1982 is the most recent copyright date, so that's the date we use. Now, the abbreviation N period, D period, used to signify no date. This was rare and would mostly apply to older works published before there were copyright laws or privately written pieces like undated tracts or letters. Normally you can find a date. Unfortunately, online citation machines like Lazy Bib and Frustration Machine often use this because, well, they're not humans and they don't think like people. If you rely on these applications, please edit the entries and get rid of things like ND or NP, which means no publisher, same idea. You can almost always find the publisher. And it does appear that the eighth edition of the MLA handbook no longer uses these abbreviations, so you should avoid them. Now, if the book has other contributors, such as translators or editors, these normally follow the book title. There used to be some abbreviations, but now write out, translated by, or edited by, followed by the name or the names, and these normally end with a comma. So here's a copy of Homer's Odyssey that uh, we use in some of our classes. So we have the author's name, the title of the book, translated by E.V. Ryu and D.C.H. Ryu, comma, publisher, date. Same with editors. So here's edition of Idols of the King that we use. And notice there's an editor after the title, edited by J.M. Gray. Now, if the author is truly unknown, if their work is anonymous, then you start with the title of the book. And this is especially true of older works. Many, and, but also many times articles and reference works or web pages do list the authors elsewhere but some entries to reference works may also be anonymous. News articles from wire services will often have no byline, so no author name is given there. So here's a case of an anonymous work, the Epic of Gilgamesh, okay, written in ancient Babylon. None of the records told us who wrote it or who recorded it or anything, so we just start with the title, the Epic of Gilgamesh. And remember, since the uh, word the doesn't count. If we're alphabetizing this, it comes alphabetized according to the word epic. Okay, and, uh, and there is no author, so it starts with the title. Notice there is a translator uh, translating it from the uh, cuneiform, I guess, um, or translated by Andrew George. Now, sometimes a book, uh, also true of web pages. It's written by a committee or a government agency or a corporation. If a government agency, then you begin with the highest level. So here are a couple of uh, books, one written by the National Rifle Association, okay. uh, step by step guide to gun safety. Okay, so uh, there's no specific author given, it's put out by this organization, so that's how it would uh, be stated. Uh, it's also true of a lot of government documents. In this case, uh, New York State Committee on State Prisons. Um, by the way, in this one, I, I do note the original publication date, um, which can be helpful in a case like this because it lets the reader know that this was a report done uh, in 1883, uh, even though it was reprinted 90 years later. So you're not thinking that it's a investigation done in the 70s, for example. Now, if the agency or corporation is both the author and the publisher, then you begin with the title and treat the publisher in the normal, normal manner. So, for example, the MLA handbook itself is published by the Modern Language Association. Okay? There is no author or editor is uh, named in the book, so you just start out with the title, MLA handbook, 8th edition, 
and then Modern Language Association of America. Uh, another example, uh, National Fire Protection Association codes uh, put out almost annually by the NFPA. So this is, uh, again, to start with the title, NFPA 70, National Electrical Code 201, you know, 2017, National Fire Protection Association is both the author and the publisher. That way you don't have to duplicate anything, too. Uh, in fact, if uh, a lot of times, and this is one of those problems with those online uh, citation makers and lazy bib and stuff, is that they uh, a lot of times will repeat the publisher or repeat the name of the website for why? I don't know. What does this do? Okay. Turn. Uh, as I mentioned before, terms like company, inc, and corporation, so may be dropped, just include the main names. The older uh, MLA handbook had a number of abbreviations and shortened names for well-known publishers, but apparently that's no longer standard. However, having mentioned that, section 1.6 does have common abbreviations still considered standard for works cited pages and references. Uh, and this mostly includes things like uh, P for page, um, the months of the year, Shakespeare plays, books of the Bible, things that are commonly cited. Now, following items, if is part of the work being cited, follow the title in the following order. So after the title, before the publisher. Uh, if there's more than one of these, they are separated by commas. So first, the volume number of a single book in a set or series. Then the name of a series or collection. This is a change. This, these things used to come at the end of the entry, but now they're in the middle of it after the title. Other contributors, editors, translators, illustrators, performers, you know, depending on what it is. Then the version. This includes revisions and translations, so it might be things like second edition, revised edition, uh, you know, different translations like new international version, and so on followed by the number, usually a volume number, uh, but sometimes a season or episode. Uh, and, uh, for periodicals, this may include volume and number. Um, so here's a simple example. Where, where am I? There we go. Uh, <clears throat> the name of the series. Uh, used to be at the end. Now it's after the title. So, for example, C.S. Lewis, The Last Battles from the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, and that follows the uh, title. Notice I put Harper Trophy rather than just Harper. Uh, probably putting Harper would be fine, but the way the title page is set up, it says Harper Trophy, a division of Harper Collins. So, probably the um, best way to do it under the circumstances. Okay, Other con contributors, editors, translators, illustrators, etc. So here's um, an example of a book that has both an editor and a translator. Translated from the French and edited for various reasons. So uh, Alexander Dumas, Black Tulip, uh, then edited by David Coward, comma, translated by Franz Demler, comma, and then Oxford University Press, etc. Uh, and place the other contributors in the same order that the work lists them. In this case, the editor's name comes before the translator's name. And uh, again, the commas separate each one of these. Another the example of version or edition. So here's one uh, a collection of stories by O. Henry, and this is the authorized edition. Apparently, back in the 1920s, they were some pirated editions. Um, now, one thing I do want to mention about pen names. People sometimes ask about this. O. Henry is the pen name for William Sidney Porter. Normally, when an author is better known or identified by his or her pen name, Use the pen name, and this is true even for online pseudonyms. Okay, now you may add the real name in parentheses, but it's not necessary for well-known authors like O. Henry or Mark Twain. 
Uh, and I would also apply this to Roman authors known by one of their names, such as Ovid instead of Publius Ovidius Naso. Uh, <clears throat> in English, we just call him Ovid. OK. Um, here are some examples of Bible versions following different editions of the Bible. Uh, so here's usually Bible's just Holy Bible. Sometimes the Bible will have a different title. Since the Bible is an anthology or work of collected writings by different writers, you start with the title. So, so you start with Holy Bible, contemporary English version, or whatever. Life Application Study Bible is the marketed title of that particular uh, edition it's in the New International Version. Um, by the way, that should be a comma after a version, not a period. Sorry about that. Here's one. Uh, students uh, in my school have been using this grammar book for a couple of years. And notice uh, in this one, uh, you have to include the grade as well as the handbook edition because there are a number of books with the same title, and they're distinguished by both the grade level, which is from 6 through 12, and the type of edition. There are at least three different editions of these as well. There's a student edition, the handbook edition, and the teacher edition. And also there should be a uh, comma after ed. And I apologize for that. I seem to have missed a couple of commas. And then uh, number, volume number. So here we have Anthology of American Literature, editor's name, volume one. And then for periodical, periodicals, uh, very, very common to have volume number. Um, and we'll talk more about periodicals uh, in the subsequent uh, presentation. But you can see here, uh, National Geographic, well-known magazine, well-known periodical. So it has a volume number. And it also has an issue number as well. Oh, seem to have gotten out of place again. There we go. OK, if you used all the volumes in a multi-volume set, indicate that by writing the number of the volumes in the set, followed by uh, VOLS, abbreviation for volumes, after the period, after the date. This is one thing that does follow the publication date. and. Also, notice uh, in your MLA handbook, uh, page 52 has some other specialized items that may follow the date. So here's one. Uh, this is a version of the Count of Monte Cristo uh, that was published in four volumes. Um, it's the unabridged bilingual edition. You would want to include that. Uh, and um, It doesn't give us the name of the translator, so even though it is a bilingual edition. So anyway, this um, oh, 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 oh. this is the first presentation. This basically tells you uh, everything you need to know about book bibliographies, plus a lot of other things that are helpful in terms of you know, you know, which publisher and you know, how to do authors and editors and that sort of thing. But the second presentation, uh, which we'll be doing, tells how to do bibliographies for articles and web pages uh, with some special information, including interviews, works of art, and other things like that. Anyway, I hope, hopefully this has helped you and that you'll be able to apply these very shortly.